Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. So, what do you think about the the Rainbow Six uh, series? They've done extremely well uh, over the years, and even when they recently introduced uh, Extraction, Extraction was really good. You know, it's mm-hmm. definitely a, a title that I would like to go back to. It, it really made you want to go back into some of the matches, especially if you lose a member in there, right? And I yeah. and I think that I still have somebody lost in there that I need to go release uh, from you the webs. Months, <laughs> I left, <laughs> yeah, I left them in there. You know, I played other games instead of going back to you know get them out. You know, oh, of the yeah. system. And and that game was pretty good. I mean, what did they what did it do? It used a foundation that was extremely successful for uh for Rainbow Six, and we got an extraction title that we didn't think that we were going to like. And we did like it. It, it yeah. turned out to be really good. So so now what they're saying here mm-hmm. with this next bit of news is that this title, Rainbow Six Siege, may not necessarily change. We may just rock with this Rainbow Siege, um, Rainbow Six Siege forever because people are still playing it like it just came out last week you know what i mean so so what do you think about that what do you think about that so when it comes to that particular bit of news a rainbow six siege creative director seemingly doesn't have any plans for a sequel and essentially it's it's saying that this game the way it's designed or the way it is right now it could last forever well yeah they've done several health updates over the years where they focus on maintaining the overall health of the game, the community, you know, keeping hackers from destroying the entire experience. And we're coming up on year nine. They just revealed what they're going to do with year nine and they're announcing new characters. So, I mean, the game just constantly grows and evolves. They're adding new maps, new characters over time. It's the live service model that works and it doesn't get any of the flack that other live service games do because they, you know, they never use the official title, but they right. do what a live service game does and they do it really well. And the cutscenes yeah. are really good too, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> uh, I don't know, they run, they run sales, you know, quite frequently on mm-hmm. Steam. So if you're definitely looking for a title that is uh, super solid and you're looking for a shooter that, really doesn't drop the ball right yeah. rainbow six siege is, is definitely you know that particular title so one of the things that it says here uh it says that uh, watching uh having watched other live service games go through sequels just completely dropped the ball the team would rather build up the fan favorite shooter instead of making a new one the idea of switching engines uh to something that can be off the shelf ready simply doesn't answer the needs of a really competitive and demanding game like siege and this title uh whether you've played it or not or if you watch competition it, it is still one of those titles where it is intense watching people play it right i know that uh we have you know other titles that are that are like that but from a competitive standpoint whether you're looking at you know a counter-strike or a title like rainbow six siege or you know a highly competitive match of halo or you know, when you think about Modern Warfare and what they've done, you know, Rainbow Six, there's just something extremely special. I do believe that it's in its own category, maybe very closely related to Counter-Strike, but, uh, or um, what's what's the other one that they play a lot? Um, it's 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 a more colorful title and it's a highly Valorant? competitive as well. Valorant. Yeah. Exactly. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. So when you think about those titles, highly competitive and they're in their own category. Uh, so changing them would really destroy what they've already built by way of, of a foundation. So any additional thoughts on that? Yeah, Rainbow Six Siege 2 just wouldn't, you know, it, it'd be nice to have like a graphical facelift or whatever. But I mean, they don't even need that. It still looks great for a game that came out so long ago. So I wonder who they're dogging on, though, if they're if they're pointing a Destiny or Division or any of these other guys that went for a part two when it's like actually you could have just rode with part one for a while (laughs) yeah and it's interesting right when you think about it because it specifically says um it's a broad stroke of a you know like hey what are you doing over here we 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 don't know if you're doing anything right because you keep dropping the ball whether you made a second game or a third game so i think it it could be any live service games um that may not necessarily warframe has done well yeah warframe has done well for the things that they've built so i don't think they're talking about warframe and 
in particular, but I could definitely see them talking about destiny. <laughs> yeah. Or division. Cause division has struggled too. We haven't really talked about that. It They're has. struggling. Yeah. But do you feel they're on the up, up trend as they're putting out more content now? I think they're on an uptrend when they focus on Division Two, right? <laughs> so you, as long you know as what I mean. Doing something, it's pretty right. Good. As long as long as they're focusing on Division Two, the reason I say specifically that title is because every other title that they try to introduce by way of a beta or for us to play for an extended period of time, you know, it takes away from the you know, for lack of a better term, right now, the magic that we've seen with Division 2 and how that core, again, going back to, I guess th this may be the theme of this entire episode, the core yeah. experience of the games that we're playing right now do not change that particular formula. And whenever Ubisoft focused on Division 2 uh, for the core experience and what we enjoyed and, you know, with with the atmosphere, uh, the the struggle, you know, the dark zone, the things that we appreciate about that particular title, they do well. Once they start introducing other titles that we don't care about starving in Division 2, right? So introducing a title like that, I, and, and that's my personal opinion, right? I, I don't necessarily care about that. Looking yeah. for water in Division 2, right? Now, if, if water is a resource that I'm going to grab to give someone else in Division 2, that's one thing. But looking yeah. for it, starving for it, and waiting for the time of day to, to go out, and then I'm not playing... Um, I'm not playing a Resident Evil game, okay? I'm not playing a Resident <laughs> Evil game. You know, any game that is like a survival type experience, I'm not playing that, uh, even though technically uh, Division 2 is that type of a title. But uh, a derivative of that where I have to, you know, uh, farm and grab water and do all that stuff, I I'm not interested in that. No, it's a little too crazy. <laughs> I I'm, I'm definitely not interested in that. So... The fact that they're refocusing on Division 2, the game itself, I think that that's going to keep people around for a while. Do you think that means that Heartland is dead? Because we haven't heard anything from it in a while. I think I think Heartland is on, on the back burner because uh, there are titles. If, if the title isn't lighthearted and its approach you know, for farming and crafting and doing those things, um, and the reason I say if it's not, you know, lighthearted is because a title like Power World coming out of nowhere is a lighthearted title for crafting and all the things that people enjoy in those games. But mm -hmm. in a a heavy hearted title like Division Two, we're already doing enough to stay alive. Yeah. So now you want us to look for water and you know, hydrate I gotta go ourselves. To the too. I gotta <laughs> right, right. And the title, make sure the toilet seat is in a particular, oh, you know, position. <laughs> you know, like, what are we doing? We're not no. looking for that. We're not looking for that. So, so why is, um, I think for, from what I see with the number, why is yeah. Power World uh, 25 million in the first month? Well, if, if that's the case, uh, 25 million in the first month is because it's a lighthearted title that resonates with other titles that we've enjoyed over the years that offers the crafting ability that people like in a title that makes sense for that package that we got for Power World. But outside of that, Heartland is on a back burner because we're not looking for that. Yeah. We're not looking for that. And and you're heading into a lot of uh you know comp competition season. You know, springtime is literally right around the corner for a lot of people. You know, a lot of the stuff that happens, you know, in Vegas, you know, or even the Capcom, you know, Cup recently was being streamed, you know, the last couple of days. There are different things that are happening that uh, we're amused by that we can just appreciate very quickly. But if you're asking us to spend time to build a character up by way of a crafting game and a game that wasn't designed for that in the beginning... Yes, you're looking for another, you're, you're looking to capture a market share. And I understand that, but we're not looking for that. If we were looking for it, the game would be out already. No one is really asking for that. No one is really asking for that, 
right? And and you know, I'm trying I'm trying to be kind and and what I'm going to say with your Suicide Squad game, which we'll talk about in a little bit, right? <laughs> I'm trying to be kind. It's your game cuz you're playing it. You're playing it. Yeah, you're on the team. I'm trying to be kind about that. Oh, I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying to be kind That's about crazy. the things that I want to say about that particular title. Yeah. But we'll talk about that in no, a little bit. But real. when, but uh, to answer your question, we're not looking for Heartland because we're not looking to craft in Division Two. Yeah, that's my that's my opinion. If we were looking for it, it would be out, and we would we would run to the title um, and millions, right? But we're we're not doing that. Also, that that mechanic, I believe they had. Of- it, the whole world kind of becomes the dark zone at night, you know, like the don't go out at night. I think that's another kind of unappealing thing. Like I like the dark zone just being its its own zone, not the whole world <laughs> turns into chaos at a certain time. And then I got to put my character to bed so I can, uh, you know, have right. Some but I think exploration with friends, you know, yeah, I think, I, I think different mechanics that they're going for. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right. And I think that, Merging genres is not a bad deal, right? Because we've seen Destiny go from Destiny 1 to what we call it now an action RPG, right? It's solidified itself in that particular genre. It's an action game and it's an RPG game. We can say the same thing for Division 2 as well, right? And those titles have done extremely well by merging those genres together. uh, And and it works. It works quite well. But some games, when they try to do that, they really destroy, they split the the player base instead of welcoming uh, the player base to have those genres, you know, merged together in a very nice, um, you know, uh, fashion. Uh, But I think that, you know, Heartland will continue to struggle because it's looking for an audience that isn't looking for the game. 